So the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to do is just understand the parent graph. And I think this is the most basic thing that a lot of you guys could go ahead and do to get started. Even if you don't know what to get, how to start with the problem, Ready, Christian? You don't need your phone out, actually, for this as well. So let's just look at the parent graph. Parent graph looks like this. Correct? Now, on this parent graph, you can see there's a couple changes. Parent graph of 1 over x looks like that. Written right there on the ball, on the wall. So we see there's a couple changes. We have a negative 2, we have a negative, a negative 2, and a minus 3. What are all of those things doing to our graph? Well, the negative is reflecting the x-axis. 2 is going to be a vertical stretch. And this minus 3 is a shifting right 3. OK? So we got all these things going on. You guys, I mean, this is the same thing that we've been doing all for chapter one, identifying the transformations. So you guys can see that this new graph is now going to look something like this. Um, it's now being reflected, and it's being shifted over three. So if the vertical asymptote was at zero, now the vertical asymptote is at three. Oh, uh, well, there's a little A. And so now my graph looks something like this. OK, now this is very important, to Keith, for me to be able to identify. Um, now I can go ahead and identify the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. My vertical asymptote is x equals 3, because it got shifted 3 inches to the right. My horizontal asymptote did not change. I just shoot it to the right, so that's y equals 0. Next thing it says, determine the domain and range. The domain is the set of all x values, except for the value where it's not true, which we know that you can't plug 3 into the denominator, because you'll get 0. So therefore, my domain is from negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. My range is going to be all the y values, except where there's that y asymptote. So that's from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. Then it says find the end behavior. You guys can see from left and to the right, this graph is still approaching the same value, which is 0. So I can say that the limit as x approaches infinity of my function f of x is equal to 0. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to 0. Then I wanted you guys to identify the left and right um, limits of each asymptote. There's only one asymptote here. So my asymptote is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left-hand side of my function, and the limit as x approaches 3 from the right-hand side of my function. So as we read this graph to the left at 3, which is my asymptote, as we read it from the left, where is this graph going? Infinity. And as we read it from the right, where is this graph going? Negative infinity. And then last but not least, you have the x and y intercepts. So to find the x intercept, y equals 0. So you do 0 equals negative 2 over x minus 3. And obviously, you guys can see, is there any x intercept here? Is there any x-intercept in this graph? No. So no x-intercept. To find the y-intercept, x has to equal 0. So it would be f of uh, 0 equals negative 2 divided by 0 minus 3. And the uh, y-intercept is 0 comma negative 2 divided by negative 3 is 2 thirds. 